All right, welcome back, everybody. We're still up here in Perry County, just kind of roaming around, checking stuff out, looking for uh, just coming upon stuff. And not far from the town I'm near is this cool covered bridge, Fleischer's Bridge. Now, I remember years ago, I'm going to say 10 years ago, I read an article. I remember I, was, I saw it in the news that the last remaining covered bridge in Perry County, Pennsylvania, had burned down. I don't know which bridge that was. All I remember was the last one in the county. And I remember thinking, well, what are they going to do? They're going to rebuild it. Are they going to just let it go? Because these things can be expensive to rebuild in the, in the style of the original construction. So I don't know if this is the one that burnt down and they rebuilt it because I am also near Little Buffalo State Park and over by there I saw on the map another covered bridge so I'm not sure what's going on maybe they rebuilt another one or maybe that news that news item was just was just flat out wrong but this is this is the one I think this is Sherman Sherman's Creek I want to say but this is a pretty And my battery's gonna run out here pretty soon, so let's just take a quick peek. See, um, I don't know. This one looks this one looks older than ten years. I'm gonna have to go back and research that and find out what I'm getting wrong because these beams are definitely not ten years old. In fact, here's some here's some graffiti class of '85. So this one certainly never burnt down, but I love these. Um, I love these bridges because they got this cool arch and there's a name to it. It's called. We are about to solve the mystery of the, the second covered bridge in Perry County. I'm here at Little Buffalo State Park. I just went and checked out the lake. It's nice. There's a spillway there. Lots of people fishing, kayaking stuff like that and here it is look at that there is a covered bridge here and it's it's short but that's that's a straight up covered bridge huh so that makes you wonder oh there's a i see an info plaque i guess this used to be a road I don't think people drive over here anymore. Clay's Bridge. Moved to this site in 1971. The bridge originally spanned Little Buffalo Creek about one mile west of its present location. Built in 1890, the bridge was a vital link to New Bloomfield for the residents of the valley and surrounding ridges. Several covered bridges designs were constructed in the 19th century. Clay's Bridge represents the Burr Arch. That's what it was. Clay's bridge represents the construction with an each interior side of the bridge featuring a large structural arch. Bridges of this design once spanned the one mile wide Susquehanna River. Unfortunately, Clay's bridge collapsed in February 1993 due to heavy snow and ice buildup. And here come some kids. Hey guys. I do. <laughs> okay, there's the uh, the short clay's covered bridge that we just came over. And over here is an old mill with a water wheel. This looks like it's been restored somewhat. But right here, there is like a, a millstone graveyard here, which is pretty, pretty interesting, I think. And they have different kinds of millstones, different different kinds of, of rock, and different textures carved into the surface of the millstone. It could be used for different applications, different materials to be ground. This looks like a, yeah. You see what that is? Is it just a regular millstone, or is there a deeper mystery here, huh? <laughs> uh, here's another one. 
This one is much smoother and it has a, well, it doesn't really have any texture at all. It's made out of a different kind of bedrock too. Um, and there's smaller ones like here, here, and this one is, this is interesting. Indian grindstones from Shermansdale area donated by the Chateau family. So this would have been um, something that Susquehannocks or or even Paleo Indians. I don't know if they I don't know if they dated this thing, but you can see this sculpted out bull here. That's where the Indians would have been grinding their corn, I guess. And then this one here, this one looks like it was um, made up of uh, this stuff, which to me looks like, I don't know, it almost looks like slag, but I don't think it is. I think it's, it might be some type of limestone, some type of carbonate, and they would put them in like a puzzle almost, and then they had a steel band around, or a metal band that would tighten it up. Here's one right here. Yeah, this one you can see. So you got this big, these big metal bands, and then they would screw them to keep everything together. This one has, yeah, you see those, those lines. Now this might, this might be, you know, worn down. In fact, it is. When I run my hand over it, it's, uh, it's actually pretty smooth. I mean, there's these holes, but everything else is nice and smooth. So. I wonder if this was just ground down till, till it was of no use anymore. This mill is called Shof's Mill. Let's go check out the water wheel. This is pretty cool, the little Buffalo State Park. A lot of nice surprises here. In a beautiful Perry County, Pennsylvania. Come visit. Wow. Look at that. Pit. Holy, this thing is, um, this thing is enormous. And there's, looks like there's grease on the gears there. I wonder if this thing still works. It's called a Fitz 32 foot overshot water wheel. Installed about 1906 and repaired in 1977. So I guess in the 77 they repaired it so it would work. I mean, look at the, the, I, it's just very heavy duty. I mean, the, the pit drops down 15 feet there and there's the exit. You can see that little hole there, but look at the, the metal, the amount of metal that they had used to make this thing. And there's the water, so the water would overshot. So it's overshooting, that's why they call it that, obviously. And then the weight of the water turns it. And then this goes into the mill. It's a central rotating tube that can power everything else. Now, I'm not an expert on mills or anything. And I guess the, the image I have in my head of a mill is uh, mostly all wood with a small wooden water wheel so um something this size made out of metal is uh it's new for me in terms of like adjusting how my my, my perceptions of history now of course there were was a time when there was wooden smaller wooden water wheels i want to i wish i could reach out and see how see i want to it's like uh, it's like a wheel of fortune. It's like a vertical wheel of fortune, right? Anyway, Shof's Mill. Um, and here you can see the pockets, the individual pockets that the water would fill up, right? Now, I wonder if you were to take the amount of water in one of those little pockets and weigh it, I wonder how much it would weigh. Obviously, it would, it would have been enough to cause this thing to move downwards. Um, 
we have a total drop of, uh, I don't know if it's set over there, from the, from the bottom of the water wheel to the top. I mean, that's gotta be 40 feet, right? Hey, let's go peek in these windows. Oh yeah. Well, I'm looking at a reflection. I'm looking in here and it looks like the interior is a mill. See those gears there? So I'm thinking that this thing probably is working. Mill hours, one to three weekends, other times by appointment. Wow. This mill was constructed in the midnight 1830s by John McKeon and James McAllen. In 1849, the mill was sold to William H. Schoff. Schoff began extensive improvements and in 1861, he built the brick house across the road. The Schoff family operated the mill to full capacity, grinding wheat and buckwheat flowers, cornmeal and feed for livestock. Operations ceased in the 1940s. In 1966, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania purchased the mill from Earl Schoff. Earl and his family were the third and fourth generations of the Schoff family to live on the mill property. Restoration has been done by the Little Buffalo State Park staff. So here's the different floors of the mill. One, two, three. And then they would have uh, delivered, the, I think they would have delivered the finished product in the sacks right out of these doors in a wagon. Wagons could pull up right here and they would just lower down these big sacks of uh, flour, buckwheat, like they said in the uh, in that little info thing there. Let's go back here. I like this color scheme. Yeah, so here's the pipe that would deliver the water to there. question is where does this go where is this water coming from right is there a uh, well, I don't know it's a good question what's up here ah so here's the old mill race right here I see and here oh yeah look it even has the old door there so I guess the water would come in here go through the pipe to the water wheel make this whole shebang come alive honeysuckle Well, all right, that was a really cool uh, find. Um, I think there is also a fossil, a fossil hunting site in this park somewhere. I'm not sure where, but let's see if we can squeeze in one more thing as we make our way back to York. So we're in New Bloomfield, Pennsylvania, a little uh, west of Little Buffalo State Park. And I was driving by and I saw that info plaque right there that said, mentioned a spring. And uh, I love spring, so I figured I'd come down here, check it out. And I think this is what's left of it. It doesn't look very vigorous. <laughs> But uh, I like this, this metal work that's around it. You see that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like springs and I like the way people build up things around springs. Um, they kind of become cool sites. Now there's a pipe right there. Now that pipe probably leads down there because I think that's the creek. Um, I can't tell if there's any flow. It could be, but I don't know. 
the water levels I can't really tell by the sides any there any water level indicators and this is the borough of Bloomfield but let's go see what's down here and the guy mowing his yard over there it's kind of annoying oh wow oh yeah there we go okay So yeah, this is a little spring pool. And I guess it flows out under there. It's not a ton of water, but it's funny because when you're over there, it looks like nothing's coming out. But yet right here at the other end of that ceramic pipe, that's a nice little bit of water there. And it looks clean and clear. So that water is coming right up from there, huh? And then I guess they kind of collected it in here. So I don't know, I don't know what that is right there. But yeah, look at that right there. It's about a foot deep there. And that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. I'm gonna leave you here with a shot of the big spring in New Bloomfield. Uh, I think we had pretty good luck today discovering some uh, new things, checking out some new places. Got a couple ideas for new episodes. And uh, right now, I'm gonna continue on and do some more exploring, uh, but I'm gonna let you guys go, all right? As always, love to having you along. This is Brett for Topo Ranger, signing out.